We've been sent this new game Library Labyrinth from Descent Games. Today we're going to give you five reasons why you should be looking out for it. So Library Labyrinth by Descent Games is a gateway entry game and we think it might be perfect for families. In this game you are guiding a set of literature characters around a labyrinth that you're going to build yourself with tiles. Your goal is to use their collective skills to capture terrors and return them back to their books. So, what are our five reasons why you might like this game? One of the things that's really refreshing about this game is it's actually designed by women and Descent Games, the publisher, are all female. So it makes quite a change from what can be quite a male-dominated world of board gaming. We all celebrate Elizabeth Hargrave for creating Wingspan. Wingspan's a fantastic game, it's a great game, it sold a million copies. But isn't it a bit sad that we celebrate the fact it's a female designer? We should just be celebrating the fact that Wingspan is brilliant. Hopefully this game is going to make you realise that it doesn't have to be white men making games for it to be appealing to everyone. Yeah, I think the more variety in this world, the better. So that gives this game a real tick from us. But it's not just the designers who are female in this game. All the characters you use are female too. A lot of the characters are based from different genres of books. So there's something from children's literature, from legends, from science. Many of these women you might know, there'll be people like Red Riding Hood, Medusa, or Joe March from Little Women. But there'll be some women you might not have even heard of. I mean, when we were playing, I felt quite humbled when I found out about some of the characters that are in this game. They've done some incredible things throughout history and it's brilliant they're being brought to a larger audience so we can all celebrate their achievements. But this game isn't just for female players. It actually has quite a broad appeal, I think. That subject matter of being in a library, having books and literature, and these terrors which are quite famous from history, from children's books, means that it actually has a really universal appeal. Yeah, there's certain games I think are just off-putting for certain people. Not everyone wants to play a space adventure. Some people never want to touch fantasy, and few people are really interested in European agricultural systems. <laughs> but this game is something that is appealing to everyone, and it's something that is certainly going to be appealing to younger players. I mean, we've played too many games with children where they just don't want to play it because they don't think it looks very interesting. They're going to understand what a library is and they're going to be engaged by it. And it's also something you can bring the older generation into as well and that they would enjoy playing that together. The beauty of this game being a co-op game is that you all win together or you all lose together. You're going to defeat those terrors, you're going to get them back in their books, you're going to save the library or you're all going to not do that. We play games with children sometimes where one person wins and one person loses. Obviously, the loser never wants to play that game ever again and the winner wants to play it every day <laughs> after that, ever since. If we have a co-op game, the beauty of it is you're working together and I think that feels really exciting and a great way to spend sort of an afternoon. And the game mechanics in this aren't actually that complicated so it does allow for non-gamers, the older generation, the younger generations to come and join in and play and the co-op element obviously helps that as well. Um, you just need one person who knows what they're doing <laughs> and then the others pick it up as they go along. Basically you're going to be moving or you're going to be defeating a terror or you're going to be reshelving. and the game does actually allow you to scale for difficulty so if you do have some younger players or some that aren't used to gaming at all then there are methods to make it a little bit easier. You can increase the time you have, you can change the number of terror tiles versus normal bookshelf tiles that you have um, and so it just switches things up a bit and vice versa if you want to make it a little bit trickier then you're welcome to change in the other direction and make the time a little bit less although when we've played it we've always been very close so <laughs> I think uh, like like most kind of co-op games having that time in there gives it a real sense of jeopardy and excitement and we found that we're always on the last turn it was always a flip of the coin whether we're going to win or lose So some gamers are aware of the idea of a rogue dungeon. You know what's going to be in the dungeon, but you don't know where it's going to be. And that's the case with this game. You start the game by distributing 25 tiles across a board. There's going to be terrors in there, there's going to be normal pathways, and there's also going to be tiles where you're able to reshelf the terrors. So you know what tiles are going to be in your library labyrinth, you just don't know where they're going to be or how to get to them. So a lot of the appeal of this game is dividing your time across the tasks you need to do. 
Not only do you have to defeat the terrors by using the skills of different literature characters against them, you then have to find a place to deposit them. And on the way, you're going to be turning these tiles, manipulating the labyrinth for your own purposes. It's all these variable aspects that make the game fresh and unique every time, and you think there's some sort of maths equation I can't possibly do <laughs> that's going to tell you how many different combinations of library labyrinth you're going to actually face. Every game is going to be different, which means the challenge it presents is also going to be different. Sometimes it's going to be harder, other times it's going to be much, much easier as you've got creatures you can battle and you've got places where you need to deposit them really close nearby. We had one game where the last shelf was right tucked up in a corner and it was super tricky to get it. And sometimes you'll feel obliged to fight the creature you've exposed, but you might later find a one that's much easier and more suited to your characters. So it's all about working out what best to do in any given dungeon. And as that's changing, how you approach everyone is going to be different every time. So one mechanism that I particularly enjoyed in this game was that there's a curse token that travels around the edge of the board each turn and there's also disturbance cards which get turned over and depending on what the disturbance card says one of the tiles surrounding the curse token will change. Now at the beginning of the game this is great because if the tile is face down, then the disturbance card is always going to turn that tile up and reveal what is there. Brilliant, you're exposing a terror you might need, you're exposing the tiles you might need, you're opening up pathways to move through. Excellent, the game is helping you. But as the game continues, the cards that have been exposed then get rotated or a new terror comes out on them. And these things might really help you, but they can also really hinder you. And we've had some experiences where we've been on the cusp of getting something really exciting and then this curse comes around and turns a tile around and then suddenly we're blocked off and we've got a waste of move getting us back in the orientation we needed. One of our games I'd set up my pathway only to find that a new terror was placed right in front of me blocking my path. And the clever thing about this game is it also includes these disturbance cards as a countdown method. Now, all the best card games have a countdown. We have a set amount of time when you need to do all these things, and this game is no different. Library Labyrinth is all about working out how to use your time to achieve your goals. Are you going to get certain players that be scouting out, trying to expose as much of the labyrinth as they can? Are you going to have someone who's going to be particularly good at uh, getting their literature characters to fight the terrors? Are you going to have someone who's going to be going picking up treasure chests and getting all the items? Now what's exciting about the treasure chest is you might get an item that's like Sword of Minerva and that's going to give you a lot of skills you can use to probably defeat a terror quite easily. Also, they might also have sort of abilities that help you and you have a choice of two. These could be the ability to get across the dungeon easier or to transfer cards between players on the leash and not have to share the same space. It's no good just going around killing all the terrors because that's not going to win you the game. You have to do several different things that all need to come together like clockwork if you're going to be successful. So this game is entertaining, but it's also actually a little bit educational, but in a really subtle way, not in a way that jams it down your throat. You're picking up these characters, you're turning over these terrors, and some of them you get really excited thinking, oh, I know this one, oh great, I've got Little Red Riding Hood in my hand, or I've got Alice in Wonderland with me, fantastic. But then you turn over someone and you think, oh, who's this? Oh, I wonder. And it adds to that sort of intrigue, which terror matches up with which character. It's it's fun and I think particularly for people that enjoy reading and have really enjoyed some of the other characters that they know in the game it's really going to pique their interest to find out a little bit more. I like to think this is kind of stealth education we're playing a game with children and they don't realize they're learning while they're playing and often I found them asking questions about who are these people how do I find out more about them the best way to find out about them is to head to a library. Hopefully you found this video helpful to see whether Library Labyrinth is going to be the perfect gateway game for your family. If you've enjoyed what we're doing, please like this video and if you want to see more of our content, please subscribe. If you have any questions about the game, do feel free to comment and we'll answer what we can. And hopefully you'll be heading to Kickstarter to back this game because you find it a real page turner. You turn the tiles. Hopefully you're going to back this game because you find it a real tile turner. <laughs>